Hi everyone, my name is Chris Cohn and I'm a forensic consultant here at Magnet Forensics. In a prior role, I worked in a digital forensics lab where we supported a very busy Internet Crimes Against Children unit. If you've ever worked with that type of investigation, you know how overwhelming the task of media categorization can be. More recently, if you've been a part of the Magnet Idea Lab, you've likely seen the Hashsets Manager in beta testing. Magnet Forensics is happy to announce the Hashsets Manager has officially exited the beta stage and graduated from the Magnet Idea Lab and is now available for download on the free tools page at the Magnet Forensics website, along with all of the other great options available on that page. Log in and take a look if you haven't before. The Hashsets Manager is a standalone tool with fully integrated support in Axiom and Axiom Cyber so that you can sync all of the different hash sets for use in your investigations across your organization and its different installations of Axiom or Axiom Cyber. And while at first glance you might think this is a tool only designed to assist in CSAM investigations, I'd suggest this is something you're going to want to implement no matter the type of investigation you're tasked with. I feel like we talk about the volume of data digital investigators are dealing with in just about every article, blog post, video, or webinar these days. It's a real thing, but you are living it and having to work through it in every investigation. The Hash Sets Manager really can do some of the heavy lifting for you on just about any digital forensic exam, and we're going to look at some of the different ways you can use it. One of the things I found is that examiners I worked with would not take the time to import and properly set up hash sets for use in their investigation. They were so busy working from one case to the next, they couldn't stop long enough to enable features that may save them hours on every investigation, or even more. So to begin, you'll need a copy of Axiom or Axiom Cyber installed, and you'll need to go visit the Tools menu and select Settings to ensure the option for Hash Sets Manager integration is enabled under product integration. So from the settings window, I'll scroll all the way to the bottom and then I'll check the box for hash sets manager. Scrolling down, we see we have a link here and some instructions to download and install the hash sets manager. You could use the link shown to download the hash sets manager or log into your customer support portal account on the Magnet Forensics website and navigate to the free tools page. Regardless of which method you use to download the hash sets manager, you'll end up with this installer. I've mentioned the Hash Sets Manager can be used to manage hash databases across multiple workstations and installations of Axiom or Axiom Cyber, but it can also be installed on the same computer you're running Axiom from. Hash Sets Manager isn't just for organizations with multiple examiners, workstations, and installations of Axiom. It's perfectly suited for use in a one examiner shop running on the same workstation alongside Axiom or Axiom Cyber. In any use case, Hash Sets Manager really does streamline the administrative overhead of the overall management of hash sets for use in your investigation. With there being so many different ways to install and configure Hash Sets Manager, depending on your environment, we're going to walk through and look at a couple of scenarios to get you started. The overall use is the same, regardless of how you have it configured. And the Hash Sets Manager's user guide is a great resource if you need additional information. Now I've launched the installer. I'm going to select the language that I'd like to use during the installation, and I'll just walk through the install keeping all of the defaults. Once the installation completes, I'll select Finish, and this will launch the Hashsets Manager web portal in my default browser. Remember, in Axiom and Axiom Cyber, you can use hash sets to both include and exclude items shown in the Artifact Explorer. And you can use Hash Sets Manager to upload and manage multiple hash sets in a single centralized database, which can then be queried by all of the workstations in your environment. No more having to go around to each machine to manually perform NSRL or Project Vic updates. Let Hash Sets Manager do that work for you. Now we've walked through Hash Sets Manager's installation and talked about importing hash sets for inclusion and exclusion purposes. And in the example we've been using, Hashsets Manager has been installed on our own local system. With Hashsets Manager, I can use the options to add a hash set under the Media Categorization Hashsets heading to upload a hash set from Project Vic or CADE for use in media categorization. Or I could bring in my own hash set with known files of interest. Finally, scrolling down beneath the non relevant file hashsets heading, we have the ability to import hash sets such as the NSRLs from NIST, to exclude known non-relevant files like standard icons and screensavers. Another use for this feature, if you work for an organization with a gold build image, 
Simply create a hash list of the known good files in that image and add it via the hash sets manager as a non-relevant file hash set. If you work for an organization that utilizes multiple gold build images, depending on the work unit the endpoint is deployed in, just create non-relevant hash sets for each of those and load them into hash sets manager. Once you have the hash sets loaded into the hash sets manager web portal to your liking, you'll interact with those through Axiom Process, just as you would with any other hash list. For this example, I'm going to return to Axiom Process, go back to the Tools menu, select Settings, and scroll down to the entry under Product Integrations to enable Hash Sets Manager. Beneath the Hash Sets Manager settings, we can see our own loopback address and then port number 20443, which is the default used at installation of the Hash Sets Manager. And selecting the Connect to Server button, will allow me to connect to the Hash Sets Manager, and I can see the green circle there indicating all is as expected. Now, just a couple of things. The example so far has shown using Hash Sets Manager when it's installed on the same machine where we're running Axiom or Axiom Cyber from. One of the other use cases for this, and one of the things we've talked about, is the ability to utilize the Hash Sets Manager for centralized management of a variety of different hash sets. So you know what it looks like when it doesn't work. I'm just going to put something ridiculous in here, dot one dot two dot three dot four, and connect. Now, as expected, that failed. I do have the hash sets manager running on another computer here on my network. And the only requirement for this is that the hash sets manager must be running on a machine on the same network as where you're running Magnet Axiom or Axiom Cyber. So continuing with this example, I'll just do the IP config command so that we can see the IPv4 address for this machine is 192.168.40.40. Now I have another machine running where the last octet is .69, and I have the hash sets manager already running there. So we would simply provide the IP address for our hash sets manager server, and then select the option to connect to server. Behind the scenes, this installation of Axiom Process through its integration with the Hash Sets Manager will automatically synchronize all the hash information contained on the server to this installation of Axiom or Axiom Cyber. From there, the options to select hash sets for use in media categorization, identifying files of interest, or excluding known good files from view in the Artifact Explorer would be exactly the same as if you'd loaded the hash sets manually via Axiom Process. Thanks to our Magnet Idea Lab members, the Hash Sets Manager has made it from a successful beta to a program available for download on our free tools page. Some of the features listed on the screen have been added throughout the beta program in response to user requests. Thanks for watching, and I hope this has been useful for you.